All right, let's be honest with each other for a second. You talk about the cloud like you know what it is. I mean, you save your photos there, you stream your shows from there, you might even be paying a monthly fee to it. But if I ask you to point to the cloud, you just gesture vaguely towards the ceiling. How did you make it this far in life without knowing this? Today, I'll explain how the cloud stores everything to you like you're five years old. And by the time we're done here, you'll finally understand why your phone is screaming about being full when all your precious memories are supposedly floating around in digital heaven. First, we need to get one thing straight. The biggest lie you've ever been told is the name itself. The cloud has nothing to do with the sky. It's not some fluffy white ethereal mist that gently cradles your data. It's not a magical weather system for your documents. The cloud is just a fancy marketable name for something very boring. Someone else's computer. Now, let me repeat that, because this is the most important part. Say it with me. The cloud is just someone else's computer. It's not yours. It's a gigantic, powerful, and ridiculously expensive computer sitting in a giant, boring building, and a company just lets you rent a tiny little corner of it. That's it. That's the big secret. They called it the cloud because it sounds way cooler than renting a digital shoebox in a warehouse in Ohio. So, let's break down how this actually works. Think about your stuff. Your phone, your laptop, your tablet. Think of each of these devices as your own personal backpack. You carry your backpack with you everywhere. Inside, you keep the things you need right now. Your favorite app, the photos you took today, the music you're listening to on the bus. But your backpack is pretty small, and it gets pretty heavy, and it runs out of room really fast. So, you can't fit all your toys, all your books, and every single snack you've ever owned into one little backpack. What do you do when your backpack is full? Well, you could delete things, or you could throw away that amazing photo of your lunch from three years ago. Or, you could use the cloud. In this story, the cloud is a massive, magical locker that you rent back in your house. Your house, in this case, is a giant windowless building owned by a huge company. And this building is called a data center. A data center is essentially a fortress for computers. It's filled with endless rows of tall metal racks that look like giant library shelves. But instead of books, these shelves are packed with computers. And no, not computers like your laptop. These are flat, boring-looking boxes called servers. A server is a computer that has only one job, to store stuff and serve it back to you when you ask for it. It doesn't play games, it doesn't browse the web, it just sits there waiting for you to need something. And these data centers are wild. They're kept incredibly cold, colder than your dad keeps the house in the summer, because all those computers running all at once make a ton of heat, and if they get too hot, they'd have a little meltdown, which is a very expensive boo-boo. They also have ridiculous security. I mean, we're talking guards, fences, keycards, and scanners that check your eyeballs. Now, you have a better chance of walking into a dragon's lair than you do of waltzing into a data center. And all of this is to protect the computers that hold your stuff. Your digital locker is one of the most secure places on Earth. So, when you take a picture on your phone, it first lives in your backpack, your phone storage, but when your backpack is getting full, you see that little notification that says storage almost full, and you feel a tiny sense of panic. You decide to back up to the cloud. But what you're actually doing is just telling your phone to send a copy of that picture to your rented locker in the giant computer fortress. And how does it get there? Well, through the internet, of course. The internet is the magic delivery service. It's like a system of invisible roads and super fast delivery trucks. When you hit upload, you're putting your picture in a tiny digital delivery truck. The truck zips across the internet highway and arrives at the data center. The security guard then lets the truck in, and your picture is carefully placed inside your designated spot on one of those server computers. And it's now in your locker. You can then delete the picture from your phone, your backpack, in order to make more room. Now, when you want to see that picture again, all you gotta do is just open up your photo app and tap on the little thumbnail. This sends a message back to the locker fortress. It's like calling the delivery service and saying, Hey, can you bring me that picture of my dog wearing a tiny hat? The server goes and finds your picture, puts it back on a delivery truck, and sends it speeding down the internet highway right back to your phone's screen. Now, you're not actually holding the picture in your phone again, you're just looking at it. And this is called streaming. It's like looking through the window of your locker without having to take the item out and put it back in your backpack. But what if something bad happens at the fortress? What if there's a power outage, or a clumsy worker trips and unplugs the server that holds your precious dog photo? Did you just lose it forever? 
No, you silly goose. The companies that own these data centers aren't dummies. They know that things can break. So they don't just store your picture in one single spot. I mean, that would be like putting all of your toys in one basket. So the moment you upload that photo, the company system automatically makes a copy of it. It's like a magic copy machine. It makes an identical copy of your dog photo and stores it on a completely different server in a different rack. Then, just to be extra super duper safe, it sends another copy to a completely different data center. That's right, your one photo doesn't just live in one locker in Ohio. There's probably a copy of it in a locker in Virginia and maybe another one in Oregon, or even another country like Ireland. This is called redundancy, which is a grown up word for having backups for your backups. So if the entire data center in Ohio gets hit by a meteorite, the system just shrugs, finds the copy in Virginia, and sends that one to your phone instead. You'd never even know that anything happened. I mean, your digital stuff is probably safer than your physical stuff. Your photo of that dog in a hat is more protected than the actual hat. And this brings us to the big question. Why do we have to pay for this? Well, some of it is free, but if you have a lot of stuff, you do have to pay a monthly fee. You're paying for the locker rental. Remember that fortress? Well, it costs a whole lot of money to run, and you have to pay for the building itself. You have to pay for the bajillion dollars in electricity it takes to run all those computers and keep them icy cold. You have to pay the security guards to protect your files from bad guys. You have to pay for the super fast internet connection, the delivery truck system that moves your stuff around. I mean, you're just chipping in a few bucks a month to help cover the costs of your little corner in their gigantic, expensive operation. It's basically a storage unit fee for your digital junk. And so, this leads us to the final mystery. If all your stuff is safe and sound in the cloud locker, why does your phone, your backpack, still run out of space? Well, this is the part that confuses everyone. If think about the backpack and locker analogy again. Your cloud storage is the locker, and it can be huge. You can pay for a locker big enough to hold every photo you'll ever take for the rest of your life. But your phone is still the backpack. It's still small. To do anything with any item from your locker, you have to bring it into your backpack, at least temporarily. So when you want to edit a photo, you have to download it to your phone again, and the delivery truck brings it from the locker and puts it back in your backpack. When you download a new app, it has to live in your backpack, and when your phone automatically downloads your recent emails and messages, it's putting them in your backpack as well. Your backpack fills up with all the things that you are actively using or looking at. Your phone screams about low storage because your backpack is full, even if your locker is mostly empty. The operating system on your phone, the apps you use every day, and all the temporary files needed to make things run smoothly are all taking up space in the backpack. And the solution is to be a better packer. I mean, you need to tell your phone to put some of the older, less used items back into the locker permanently and only show you a little picture of them. And this is what features like optimized iPhone storage do. They take the full-size photo out of your backpack and leave a tiny placeholder. I mean, the real photo is still safe in your locker, but it's no longer taking up all the room in your bag. So the cloud isn't really magic. It's a very physical, very real system. It's a business, and you're just a customer renting space. When you upload, you're sending the stuff to a computer in a cold building. And when you download or stream, you're asking for it back. They make copies to keep it safe, you pay them for the service, and that's pretty much the whole deal. It's just a bunch of computers in a bunch of buildings connected by a bunch of wires. So, let's recap. The cloud is not in the sky. It's a fancy name for a giant warehouse full of computers that you rent space on. You send your digital toys there using the internet delivery service and the company is so careful that it makes extra copies and stores them in different warehouses just in case one has a boo-boo. You pay them a little money for rent and your phone still gets full because your phone is a small backpack and the cloud is a giant locker and you simply can't carry everything at once. You see? You get it now. It wasn't that hard. I mean, you're basically an expert in global data infrastructure now. So you can stop pointing at the sky now and instead, just point vaguely in the direction of the nearest industrial park. So go forth and explain this to someone else. Or, you know, don't. Just keep that secret knowledge for yourself. Your call.